level to see if I can level the car for Manu. Oh, that's not too bad, I don't think. Not perfect, though. Tricky business. Morning. Beautiful. So all seems calm and peaceful here with this herd of zebra. And they certainly are looking quite magnificent in this morning sunshine. Diana, good to have you on board. You ask a good question. You'd like to know what is the difference between a reserve and a conservancy? And I think a lot will depend on the country that you're in. Here in Kenya, basically, it's fair to say that both reserves as well as national parks are both quite similar in that they're usually owned by, <clears throat> excuse me, the Kenyan governments. Just like in South Africa, it's the same thing. Our national parks and reserves are run in general by the governments, although the Sabi Sands private game reserve is obviously privately run. Here in Kenya, conservancies generally refer to community-owned land that are, in one way or another, being used to try and conserve wildlife at the same time as the local people continuing with their business. So around the Mara Reserve and the Mara Triangle, which are the two kind of government-owned portions of the Mara ecosystem, there are conservancies, a whole bunch of them. I think there's about five or six, all with quite difficult names to pronounce. Oh, some stallions working out who's boss. And... Those conservancies can be run in a, a manner of different ways. A lot of the time, local people still live on the conservancies. They still graze their wildlife on the conservancies and live side by side the animals. Um, so essentially, I think that sums things up for you, Diane. So if you ever hear of a conservancy in Kenya, almost 99% of the time it is going to mean that it's the community's land and the community will rent their land out to investors who build a lodge on the property, therefore bringing in security as well as obviously not only for the animals but also for the people in those areas. So there's a lot of very remote places in Kenya where these community conservancies are doing a great job in keeping areas wild and helping educate the local people to the value of wildlife. Unlike South Africa, um, wildlife in Kenya, all every single wild animal in Kenya belongs to the Kenyan government. And in South Africa, it's very different because as a private landowner, you can own your own zebra, rhino, lion, which means obviously private individuals have vested interest in looking after or raising wildlife. Here in Kenya, it's only really the government that benefits. So... These community conservancies are a good way and avenue for investors and conservationists to create money from tourism and then feed that money back to the rightful landowners, the communities living along them or among them. There's also no hunting in Kenya, whereas there is hunting in South Africa. So there's a few quite large differences between the conservation models in the two countries. Ah, oh, marvellous. Well, I was about to head off anyway, and you'll be glad to know that Taylor has found something interesting.